Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have much pleasure in welcoming all of you to the 113th annual general meeting of the company. I have been informed by the company secretary that the requisite quorum is present. I therefore declare the meeting to order. This AGM is being held through electronic mode in conformity with regulatory provisions and the circulars issued by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Government of India. I have been informed that necessary steps have been taken by the company to ensure that the members are able to attend this AGM and work on the resolutions proposed at the meeting in a seamless manner. I'd like to advise that I'm attending this meeting from Kolkata. I would now introduce my colleagues on the board. I will start in alphabetical order with Mr. Sheel Bhadra Banerjee. Mr. Banerjee is an independent director, is attending this meeting from Sydney, Australia. Mr. Hemant Bhargava, an independent director and chairman of the Security Holders Relationship Committee is attending from Jaipur. Mrs. Alka Barucha, an independent director of your company is attending from Mumbai. Mr. Arun Dugal, also an independent director and chairman of audit committee is attending from Gurugram. Next is Mr. Supritim Datta, all time director and chief financial officer of your company attending from Kolkata. Mr. Mukesh Gupta, a non-executive director of your company, is attending from Mumbai. Mr. Hemant Malik, a whole time director of your company, is attending from Kolkata. Mr. Shamal Mukherjee, an independent director, is also attending from Kolkata. Next is Mr. Anand Naik, also an independent director and chairman of the Nomination and Compensation Committee, attending the meeting from Bangalore. Mr. Sunil Palmray, a non-executive director is attending from Montreal, Canada. Mrs. Nirupama Rao, an independent director, is attending the meeting from Bangalore. Next is Mr. Ajit Seth, an independent director of your company, joining from Washington, D.C. Mrs. Meera Shankar, also an independent director, is attending this meeting from Greater Noida. Mr. Atul Singh, a non-executive director of your company, is attending the meeting from Gurugram. Mrs. Pushpa Subramaniam is at an independent director, is joining from Hyderabad. Lastly, Mr. Sumanth Bhargavan, a whole time director of your company, is attending from Kolkata. Mr. Rajinder Kumar Singhi, company secretary, is attending the meeting from Kolkata. Authorized representatives of Mrs. Messrs. SRBC and company LLP, statutory auditors, and Messrs. S. N. Anand Subramanian and company Sec secretarial auditors are attending the meeting from Mumbai. I, on behalf of everyone present in this meeting, welcome Mrs. Barucha, Mr. Malik, Mr. Singh and Mrs. Subramanian to their first AGM as directors of their company. I would also like to inform the members that this would be the last AGM for Mr. Banerjee, Mr. Dugal and Mrs. Shankar. While Mr. Banerjee will complete his term as a director of the company on 29 July 2024, Mr. Dugal and Mrs. Shankar will complete their respective terms on, on 14 September 2024. I take this opportunity on behalf of everyone present in the meeting to acknowledge their valuable contribution to the company. I would also like to mention that since the last AGM, Mr. Nakul Anand completed his term as a whole time director of your company on 3rd January 2024. Further, Mr. Peter Chitranjan, Mr. David Simpson and Mr. Rahul Jain stepped down from the board of your company with effect from 1st September 2023, 30th January 2024 and 31st May 2024. I, on behalf of everyone present in the meeting, would also acknowledge their valuable contribution to the company. The Register of Directors and Key manage Managerial Personnel and their shareholding, the Register of Contract and Arrangements, the certificate from secretarial auditors in respect of companies' employee stock option schemes as required are available for inspection through an electronic mode during the meeting. As is customary, I will now present my annual address on the theme, ITC Stakeholder Value Through Purposeful Performance. Every new beginning evokes new hopes and aspirations. As the NDA 3.0, led by the Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, begins a new term, 
the commitment to forge ahead with redoubled energy on its journey to a Vikshat Bharat is evident. The union budget presented by the Honorable Finance Minister, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, commendably focus on unleashing inclusive growth with macroeconomic stability. The thrust on employment, skilling, MSMEs, agriculture, together with climate action, energy security, and next generation reforms provides the force multipliers to accelerate socio-economic progress. Your company has over decades lived by its abiding vision to create larger value for its stakeholders and serve national priorities. This pledge, enshrined in our credo of nation first, sub pudding, is manifest in multi-dimensional endeavors. The creation of world-class Indian brands that retain larger value in the country, state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities, iconic hospitality properties, cutting-edge R&D, extensive farmer engagement, and meaningful social initiatives that enrich livelihoods are purposeful strides to shape a future-ready enterprise for the nation. The large-scale programs to augment precious natural resources, together with impactful climate action, make your company a sustainability exemplary. As the country marches towards becoming the world's third largest economy, your company is committed to partner this momentous journey by building a future tech, climate positive, innovative and inclusive national enterprise of pride. Your company's deep engagement in all the three sectors of the economy, agriculture, manufacturing and services, enables us to make a substantial contribution to the nation's progress. In this address today, I'd like to highlight some of your company's multifaceted endeavors in a few critical areas that contribute to the shared ambition of shaping a developed India. Before I do so, let me share the progress on your company's triple bottom line performance. The world witnessed a devastating pandemic four years ago. Since then, several external factors have caused immense stress in the global economy. Despite these challenges, your company delivers sustained stakeholder value, highlights of which I would now like to share. Over the last four years, overall revenues grew, grew at a CAGR of 10.8% to about 79,000 crores. Non-cigarette revenue grew at a CAGR of 11.6% during this period and today account for 65% of net revenue. The segment EBIT posted an impressive growth of 17.9%. During the pandemic, your company's hotels and cigarette businesses were severely impacted. Since then, these businesses have charted a smart recovery. The revenue and results of the cigarette business over the last two years grew at a CAGR of nearly 13.5% with volumes surpassing pre-pandemic levels. After a period of sustained headwinds, the hotel's business emerged structurally stronger, clocking a revenue of nearly 3,000 crores and EBITDA crossing the rupees 1,000 crore mark in 24. Prudent capital allocation and focus on capital efficiency contributed to a growth in segment ROSI by nearly 540 basis points over the past four years. The growing competitiveness of ITC's world-class brands has enabled us to take our products and services to over 100 global markets. Foreign exchange earnings of your company and its subsidiaries have more than doubled since FY20 to over 9,500 crores. Your company is also proactively pursuing strategic investments, particularly in neighboring, neighboring markets such as the FMCG facility set up your company's subsidiary Surya Nepal Private Limited. Your company's wholly owned subsidiary Welcome Hotels Lanka Private Limited also launched the iconic ITC Ratna Deepa, widely acknowledged as a jewel in Colombo's hospitality landscape. As part of the asset rights strategy for ITC hotels, opportunities with, with focus on proximal markets will continue to be explored over time. The value added by your company's economic activities in the last four years aggregated to around 242,000 crores, of which over 161,000 crores accrued to the exchequer. This consistent performance is testimony to the robustness of the ITC Next strategy, which I've outlined in previous years. Let me now call out a few strategic outcomes across your company's businesses. To strengthen the future-ready FMCG portfolio, your company has launched nearly 100 superior and differentiated offerings annually, anchored on the evolving segments of health and nutrition, hygiene, protection and care, convenience, on-the-go, indulgence, among others. Sustained margin expansion was driven by premiumization, delayering of operations, agile cost management, and operating leverage. This led to an average margin expansion of 100 basis points per annum over the last seven years. 
ITC's FMCG products now reach 250 million households with consumer spends of rupees 32,500 crores. This drivers of structural competitiveness unleashed by the ITC Next strategy reinforce our aspiration to be the number one in this industry. ITC's digital investments power mainstreaming of the digital first culture, transforming all facets of operations from insighting to product development smart sourcing to on-time efficient delivery, superior brand engagement and marketing through real-time content connect and commerce. An intelligent big data ecosystem leveraging industry 4.0, AI, ML and Gen AI is redefining consumer experiences and efficiencies in operations. Your company's trade marketing and distribution infrastructure has transformed into a smart omni-channel network with a 2x growth in market coverage and three out of four retailers carrying our FMCG products. ITC has also launched six exclusive D2C platforms. The eB2B platform of your company, Unnati, continues to be rapidly scaled up, covering nearly 7 lakh outlets. In line with the asset rights strategy for the hotels business, 32 hotels have been opened in the last 24 months, taking the total to nearly 140 hotels. Segment Rossi of hotels has risen by nearly 1,100 basis points over the pre-COVID period. The paperboard and packaging business sustained its leadership in the value-added segments with focused innovations, development of customized solutions for end-user industries, and capacity augmentation. Structural competitiveness has been enhanced by leveraging its integrated business model, Industry 4.0, strategic investments in renewable energy, and in augmenting in-house pulp manufacturing capacity including India's first bleached chemi-thermomechanical pulp facility. A range of sustainable packaging solutions has been launched under the Philo brand to replace single-use plastics. A molded fiber plant in Madhya Pradesh has been commissioned recently for the next horizon of sustainable packaging. The ITC Next strategy for the agribusiness has driven continued expansion of its value-added agri portfolio. A futuristic new vector of growth was launched with ITC Mars, the company's pioneering digital initiative, which currently covers over 1.5 million farmers across 10 states and 18,000 villages. Your company's wholly owned subsidiary, ITC Infotech, sustained its growth momentum and global expansion through capability-led strategic partnerships. In line with its Orbit Next strategy, ITC Infotech also augmented its portfolio of solutions. During the year, the company acquired Blaze Clan Technologies to strengthen its capabilities in the cloud services space and make scalable progress in digital transformation solutions. The value accretive acquisitions made by the ITC group in recent years are also demonstrating appreciable progress. In the year gone by, despite global challenges and subdued domestic consumption, your company delivered resilient performance on a high base. Gross revenue was up by 6.8%, excluding agribusiness, which faced headwinds from regulatory trade restrictions, given food security concerns and inflation. PAT for the year grew by 8.9%. Over a two-year two, two year period, overall revenue and PAT grew at a CAGR of 9.9% and 16.5% respectively. FMCG others registered a growth of 14.5%, while segment PBT grew at an impressive 38.8%. While near-term challenges remain a concern for the FMCG industry, your company's innovative capacity, future-ready portfolio, resilient and agile supply chains, digital investments, and focus on penetration-led growth position as well in the addressable market potential of Rs. 5 lakh crores in our operating categories. The cigarette business fitness consolidation on a <coughs> excuse me, high base after a period of sustained growth momentum. The business continued to focus on innovation, democratization of premiumization, together with execution excellence to reinforce market standing. Tax stability and deterrent action by authorities helped regain some volumes from illicit trade. The paperboard's paper and packaging segment was impacted by muted demand in global markets, prevalence of low-priced Chinese supplies, and surge in wood costs. Despite the headwinds, the investment made across all our businesses to enhance structural competitiveness and build an enterprise of the future, position your company well to leverage emerging opportunities in the market. Our confidence in the India story is unwavering and is reflected in your company's investment outlay of about 20,000 crores in the medium term. 
Your company attained several global sustainability distinction and is the only enterprise in the world of comparable dimensions to be water, carbon and solid waste recycling positive for 22, 19 and 17 years respectively. For the sixth successive year, ITC earned its AA rating by MSCI ESG. During FI24, your company achieved the highest A rating for CDP water whilst retaining the leadership level for CDP climate. ITC remains an integral part of the Dow Jones Sustainability Emerging Markets Index. Your company has already achieved its 2030 target of sourcing 50% of total energy from renewable sources as also its targets for AWS Platinum Water Stewardship by certifying eight high-stress sites. <coughs> it is indeed a matter of pride that 12 of your company's hotels and the data center were the first in the world to achieve LEED Zero Carbon Certification. The first four hotels in the world to be LEED Zero Water are also from your company. Promoting circularity, ITC has been plastic neutral for last three years. Your company's multidimensional social development programs empower rural communities across the country, including 6 million women. The company's triple bottom line approach, driven by its abiding philosophy of responsible competitiveness, assumes even more rele relevance in the current socioeconomic context. We live today in a world that is traversing through a perfect storm of geopolitical tensions. Climate emergency, cost of living crisis, food and nutrition security concerns, as well as inadequate livelihood opportunities. This is also evident in the decline of global merchandise trade by about 1.2% last year. Amidst these adversities, rapid technological advance advancements include AI are redefining the future. Although the evolving risks are daunting, Challenges also ignite new opportunities to shape a stronger, secure, resilient, and a promising tomorrow. In such a turbulent world, India has emerged and is, as an inspiring lighthouse of growth. The standout performance as the world's fastest growing major economy with a consistent 7% plus GDP growth rate over the last few years has not only evoked global respect, but also points to its future promise. Experts predict that India is likely to contribute 18% to the world's GDP growth in the next five years and could even touch 30% between 2035 and 2040. Undoubtedly, India's economic transformation is testimony to the government's far-sighted policies and astute economic management. Sustained public expenditure in physical, digital, agri and rural infrastructure combined with sharp execution is fueling a virtuous cycle of consumption, investments and employment. The rise of aspirational India will also spur consumption-led growth. Estimates suggest that the country's consumer market will more than dub double to over US dollar 5.2 trillion by 2031. Analysts project that India's per, per capita GDP is likely to touch the inflection point of US dollar 4000 by 2030, fueling larger domestic consumption and driving higher growth. This is truly India's moment in history. Mega opportunities are today emerging from the diversification in global supply chain, the all-pervasive digi digital revolution, and the urgent need for a green transition. The synergy of India's large market, favorable demographics, rising disposable incomes, technological prowess, and vibrant entrepreneurship will continue to power growth in the foreseeable future. While purposeful policies can accelerate the pursuit of these unbounded opportunities, we deeply believe that enterprises rooted in India as economic organs of society can play a vital role in partnering the nation in the promising journey ahead. To my mind, exemplary enterprises contribute to nation building by not only making uncompromising efforts to be globally competitive, but also by embedding larger societal value creation at the core of corporate strategy. Stakeholder value through purposeful performance is indeed the bedrock on which progressive enterprise will be built in the future. A nation's competitiveness gets enhanced when world-class national brands are assiduously built to retain larger value in the country while serving domestic and global markets. Further, investments in the state-of-the-art assets across all economic sectors, cutting-edge R&D and social infrastructure build competitive capacity for nations. Business models that integrate the creation of environmental capital and large-scale sustainable livelihoods enrich a nation's resources and the social fabric, contributing to a more secure and resilient future. 
focused action to shape brands with purpose, promote diversity and inclusion, and build capabilities of local communities, strengthen society in more ways than one. Today, I'd like to highlight a few priorities in the context of your company's businesses, which we believe will be crucial in shaping the next horizon of socio-economic progress. It is universally acknowledged that India's favorable demographics constitutes one of its greatest strengths. More than a billion people comprising nearly 70% of the population will be of working age by 2030. Over the next decade, almost a quarter of the incremental global workforce will be from India. This powerhouse of productive human capital is unquestionably a source of unique competitive advantage as well as a formidable driver of consumption. The journey of economic transformation with purposeful in interventions has set in place a virtuous cycle of investment and employment creating quality jobs. The impressive growth of global capability centers reaffirms India's rising stature as a workplace of the world. The budget 2024 has also announced multi-dimensional programs to boost skilling and employment, strengthen MSMEs, as well as provide impetus to labor-intensive sectors. The ONDC platform set up recently can also lend new wings to micro and small enterprises akin to the UPI's remarkable impact on financial transactions. The agri and rural sector, which engages nearly half of the country's workforce, can contribute further to livelihood generation through larger value addition, digital acceleration, and diversification of on-farm, off-farm, and non-farm employment. It is indeed encouraging that the recent budget has sharply addressed several of these areas. Your company's deep engagement in agriculture, manufacturing, services, including hospitality and tourism, support millions of livelihoods across several value chains. It is well acknowledged that the tourism potential is boundless and plays a pivotal role in anchoring large-scale livelihood generation, more so given the variety of unrivaled destinations the country possesses across nature, wildlife, adventure, heritage, medical or pilgrimage tourism, as well as mice and wedding-focused opportunities. The government has rightly taken proactive steps to promote this sector. According to the draft tourism policy, employment can grow from 88 million currently to 400 billion by 2047, with tourism GDP growing from US dollar 143 billion to US dollar 1 trillion, highlighting the exponential growth potential. The emerging trends of micro tourism, immersive experiences, and multiple short vacations will also add new dimensions to this industry. The tourism sector's resurgence points to the immense potential of this industry to generate gainful employment. Supply of rooms in India currently stands at only 0.11 per 1,000 population relative to the world average of 2.2, highlighting the enormous headroom for growth. World-class convention facilities such as Bharat Mandapam and Yeshobhumi Center have hosted prestigious global events and showcased India's competitive edge in prestigious mines. While global campaigns to promote India's treasure house of tourism assets remains imperative, concerted efforts are also required to scale up skilling to meet emerging demand. The company has made significant investments in building skilled hospitality talent through six focused programs, including the ITC Hospitality Management Institute and the Welcome Group Graduate School of Hotel Administration. Granting infrastructure status to hotels and deemed export benefits to earnings from foreign tourists can provide further impetus to investments in this sector. Enriching India's tourism landscape, your company's hotels business with its repertoire of iconic properties, globally acknowledged cuisines, service excellence, and ethos of responsible luxury is well poised to leverage the emerging opportunities. The asset rights strategy envisioned for the next horizon of growth, together with the impending move to give new wings to ITC hotels as a pure play entity, hotels an exciting future. The robust pipeline of managed properties will take the overall footprint to over 200 hotels in the coming years, enabling your company to enlarge its contribution to employment generation. Similarly, the manufacturing sector, together with its extensive value chains, drives significant employment. Given your company's engagement in the paperboard value chain, I'd like to particularly emphasize on the livelihood potential in wood-based industry. India imports wood and wood-based products, including pulp, worth over 60,000 crores annually. A supportive policy framework that promotes leasing of degraded land for agroforestry in India will promote wood-based industry and spur significant employment across the value chain, stem the avoidable forex outflow, and enrich the country's green cover. 
I'm sure you will take pride that ITC's afforestation program has cumulatively supported over 210 million person days of employment, greened over 1 million acres, empowering farmers and providing a competitive source of fiber for your company's paperboards business. This sustainable source of renewable fiber, together with substantive investments in efficient import substitution, provides structural competitive advantage to your company with a multiplier impact on livelihoods. The country has nearly 30 million hectares of degraded land, the greening and productive use of which can generate millions of jobs every year besides adding to na the nation's green cover. Contributing to the Make in India vision, your company continues to invest in building world-class infrastructure and ecosystems linked to its products and services. Today, despite our going, growing footprint, nearly 90% of all raw materials are locally procured. The extended manufacturing network of over 200 factories supports local entrepreneurship and sustainable livelihoods. In the last two years alone, investments in three owned luxury hotels, eight state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities, including for products covered under PLI scheme, together with the 2x expansion of your company's distribution infrastructure have generated significant livelihoods. Investment underway in two state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities as well as the IT and Knowledge Center will also add to this potential. ITC engages with over 6,000 MSMEs, extensively focusing on upgrading their technology, quality, and skills, given our belief that enterprises are only as strong as their value chain. Today, ITC's businesses and value chains support over 6 million sustainable livelihoods. Your company's presence across all three sectors of the economy positions us well to make a growing contribution in this area of national priority. Let me now turn to an area that is today a worldwide emergency. The rapid escalation of extreme weather events poses serious risks to growth and livelihoods. Recent studies peg global economic losses from climate change at a massive US dollar 38 trillion annually by 2049, which could bring down global income by nearly 20%. India's vulnerability to climate change is significant. Last year, the country experienced extreme weather events on 318 out of 365 days, including heat waves, floods, and droughts. According to the World Bank, India could cross the Human Survivability Index from the rising temperatures, with more than 75% of the workforce exposed to heat stress by the end of the decade. Aggravating this is a severe water stress impacting nearly two-thirds of the country's districts. Undoubtedly, action is required at exponential speed and scale. Proven solutions for decarbonization need to be ramped up, while newer economically viable and pragmatic pathways are called for to address hard to abate sectors, carbon capture, utilization, and storage, as well as to ensure a just systems transition. Estimates suggest that decarbonization measures in India would require upwards of US dollar 12 trillion by 2050, necessitating substantive public, private, and multilateral funding. To unlock the potential of private capital, it will be important to catalyze accessible technologies, green financing together with market incentives and penalties besides eliminating frictions in the system. The budget announcement to develop a taxonomy for climate finance and other innovative measures will also facilitate availability of funds for mitigation and adaptation. It is indeed heartening that the Honorable Prime Minister has spearheaded several initiatives to build a climate resilient future. The move towards green hydrogen, the International Solar Alliance, and the Green Credit Initiative under Mission Life are indeed notable examples. It is a matter of pride that India is the only G20 country which is on track to achieve the 2030 NDC targets and long-term net zero commitments. Across the world, decarbonization efforts have been rightly scaled up. While these efforts will need to continue apace, their fuller impact will be felt only over a longer term However, as recent experiences demonstrate, extreme weather events are rising exponentially, aggravating climate risks and bringing adaptation to the center stage of climate action. Such extreme weather events cause economic devastation, severely impact food and nutrition security, impede industrial activity and affect quality of life, particularly for the most vulnerable. RBI estimates adaptation costs to cross US dollar 1 trillion by 2030. Experts have pointed out that every dollar spent on adaptation can lead to a 5x impact on savings. Going forward, wide-ranging adaptation measures will be called for to secure agri-value chains, pursue regenerative agriculture, and strengthen food security. 
physical infrastructure will need to be fortified while upgradations and new constructions will have to adhere to new climate resilient standards that are being codified. The company believes that corporates can make a meaningful difference in combating the climate crisis and has implemented a mosaic of far-reaching interventions. The ITC Next strategy focuses on both decarbonization and adaptation to build resilience, enhance competitiveness of his businesses while spurring new opportunities. Over the years, in line with its decarbonization strategy, ITC has significantly in invested in building green infrastructure, improving energy efficiency and adoption of renewable energy. Today, 50% of your company's total energy consumption is from renewable sources with capacity ramped up up to over 200 megawatts. Investments in a high-pressure recovery boiler in the energy-intensive paperboards business is slated to reduce coal consumption by over 1,50,000 tons annually. Recognizing that LEED Platinum certified green buildings are 25% more energy efficient and emit nearly 35% less GHG, we have built 40 platinum certified green buildings, including iconic hotels. The ITC hotels has also achieved the 2030 carbon emission targets of the Paris Agreement ahead of schedule. The company is also working with its value chain partners, both upstream and downstream for decarbonizing their operations. ITC's widespread physical infrastructure and agri -op operations are spread across 28 states and seven union territories. To secure our assets and local communities, ITC has carried out extensive climate risk assessments to identify hotspots and take site-specific adaptation actions. These assessments in over 140 sites and select agri-value chains use advanced AI-enabled climate modeling tools. Risk emanating from varied climate hazards are evaluated over a decadal timeframe extending till 2100 under various shared socioeconomic pathways. Among several interventions, it would be pertinent to call out the pioneering Climate Smart Agriculture Program that today covers 2.8 million acres close to our planned target for 2030. This intervention aims to build resilience amongst farmers, de-risk value chains from erratic weather through a package of agronomy practices as well as introduction of high-yielding climate-resilient varieties and appropriate mechanization. It is indeed encouraging to note from a study undertaken in the first wave that 70% of the villages have moved into a high resilience, high yield category from just 21% earlier. GHG emissions of select crops reduced by 13 to 66%, while farmer incomes are increased by up to 90% over a five year period. Given the successful outcomes, we propose to enhance the area covered under CSA to over 4 million acres by 2030. Recently, your company has also partnered with the government of Madhya Pradesh to promote climate smart agriculture practices. Addressing the crit critical issue of water security, your company has initiated extensive demand and supply side intervention. The integrated watershed development programs now co cover over 1.6 million acres with over 32,000 water structures, while demand side interventions reduce agriculture water use by up to 50% across 1.5 million acres. As I mentioned, eight of our units have received the AWS Platinum Certification. We aim to create water harvesting potential equal to five times our net water consumption by 2030. Going beyond these efforts, we're also working on reviving river basins with negative water balance, thereby securing value chains and serving communities. Success in the Gaud River Basin has led ITC to pursue similar projects in Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Karnataka, and MP. Urban water projects are underway in Bangalore, Chennai, and Sarant. In addition, your company has partnered the government of Karnataka to enable drought proofing of 3 lakh acres and with the government of Maharashtra to promote water efficiency. Recent studies point out that the health of natural ecosystems and biodiversity assumes critical importance as 55% of world GDP is dependent on nature. Your company's biodiversity conservation programs aimed at reviving ecosystem services and support and supporting livelihoods cover 4.7 lakh acres. Recognizing the development of sustainable agriscapes and mangroves conservations helps in creating a carbon sink with higher sequestration, your company is piloting a program for mangroves conservation in Andhra Pradesh. Your company's climate action builds competitiveness and resilience of its businesses even as it addresses national priorities. 
while decarbonization projects aid mitigation the adaptation programs have been in intensified in vulnerable rural areas leveraging our deep agriculture and community engagements to enable more impactful outcomes i now turn to agriculture the lifeline of our economy this sector employs nearly half of the country's workforce and faces the onerous task of ensuring food and nutrition security amidst escalating climate challenges and depleting natural resources despite vast arable land diverse agroclimatic zones and leadership in producing several commodities the sector is constrained by low productivity inadequate processing and exports limited technology adoption and inefficient market access india's share in global agriculture trade is around 3% while less, less than 10% is processed pointing to the immense headroom for growth a transformational shift is needed to transition from traditional supply focused production to dynamic demand responsive value chains fostering value addition and significantly increasing farmer incomes the strategic reset is therefore imperative to build global competitiveness and unleash the true potential of indian agriculture it is heartening that the government has taken several measures to support development of this sector public investments in strengthening agri infrastructure national agriculture research promoting fpos to provide to provide the power of scale launch of digital agri stack and marketplaces like enams are progressive interventions next generation reforms can not only unlock the potential in agriculture but also address domestic food requirements and enable the country to be a significant player in global markets to enhance productivity increase value addition and reduce logistics cost it is imperative to encourage the setting up of market specific crop value chain clusters as recommended by the hlg of the 15th finance commission enabling a wider integration with global markets these clusters can also be envisioned to serve as export corridors with fully integrated food and agriculture parks in india catering to specific markets such clusters can encompass large number of digitally empowered fpos as also an ecosystem of micro enterprises to provide agritech solutions through farming as a service among others to enhance efficiency and competitiveness of agriculture towards this the initiative to foster the integrated development of aqua value chain demand responsive large scale vegetable production clusters near consumption centers as well as micro enterprises such as drone didi are indeed welcome the itc next strategy leverages the com com company's century long relationship with farmers to promote value added agriculture accelerate digital adoption and build climate resilience the company's world class brands anchor demand responsive agri value chains that produce the buy providing its businesses with unique competitive advantages as one of the largest procurers of agri commodities itc supports 20 agri value chains sourcing over 3 million tons from 200 districts in 22 states this enables your company to derive unique sourcing efficiencies apart from offering identity preserved attribute specific traceable agri commodities to discerning customers in india and overseas Your company exports agri commodities to over 85 countries linking farmers to global value chains. At the core of your company's intervention is ITC Mars the digital ecosystem that enables wider agri tech adoption enhances efficiencies and access to markets as well as financial services. Leveraging the power of collectives the ITC Mars ecosystem now constitutes over 1650 FPOs covering more than 1.5 million farmers. By 2030 we aspire to connect over 10 million farms the predictive hyper local and dynamic advisories coupled with an input marketplace have enhanced net farmer returns up to 30% in a short span of time over 10000 soil tests with personalized crop nutrition recommendations based on sophisticated ai based algorithms have been facilitated resulting in 10 to 15% reduction in fertilizer usage and 15 to 20% improvement in crop yields agritech solutions are also being processed progressed across multiple value chains including drone usage which focuses on nano nutrients and crop protection through remote sensing itc mars has digitized 6 million acres covering 1000 fpos to help deliver contextual and crop stage specific personalized advisories recently itc mars launched the world first first gen ai based regional voice chatbot for farmers called krishi mitra that has been co-developed with microsoft itc mars also harnesses the collective knowledge garnered over decades to provide farmers best in class services this includes the experience gained from your company's 12 mahine haryali program which enabled substantial increase in farmer incomes 
The expertise gained has also enabled us to implement such best practices in 45 aspirational districts. Exclusive PPPs with Niti Aayog in 27 such districts have improved yields up to 30%, reduced cultivation costs by about 15%, thereby boosting farmer incomes by six, up to 60%. In addition, over four, 5 lakh farmers are trained annually in best practices through farmer field schools and demonstration farms organized by ITC. Enabling farmers to enhance their range of remunerative crops for both domestic and international markets, the ITC Next strategy has substantially scaled up its value-added agriculture products portfolio. This includes spices, coffee, frozen marine, fro uh, frozen marine products, processed fruits, medicinal and aromatic plant extracts, amongst others. The state-of-the-art spices processing facility in Andhra Pradesh leverages your company's strong backward integration identity preserved sourcing, organic and integrated crop management programs, as well as custody of supply chain. ITC takes pride in being a farmer-centric organization that contributes significantly to national rural empowerment. I'm confident that your company's impactful initiatives will continue to strengthen the competitiveness and resilience of India's agri-sector. Your company draws inspiration from its abiding purpose to build an exemplary institution that is competitive, compassionate, and a champion of change. This commitment drives Team ITC to rel relentlessly strive towards shaping an enterprise of pride and value for the nation. And I must commend all of them for their tremendous dedication, passion, and commitment to our shared goals. In this unprecedented era of Parma change, it is our belief that such challenges provide a unique opportunities to reimagine the future, reinforce strategy to strengthen competitiveness, and reposition the company as a future-ready enterprise. It is for this reason that the ITC Next strategy is being rigorously pursued to shape the next horizon of growth and profitability, particularly given the promising opportunities that will unfold in India over time. Strong structural foundations have been laid to give new wings to your company's multiple drivers of growth, leveraging the mega trends of digital and sustainability, agile innovation, future-ready portfolio, empowered pronews, and strategic cost management I am confident that the steps taken in recent years will enable your company to create even more sustained value as we partner the nation on its journey to a Vikshit Bharat. In this endeavor, your company's board and I, I are indeed debted to you, our ex esteemed shareholders, for your immense support and goodwill. I will count on you as always for your continued guidance and encouragement. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.